Shout out to all my older new subscribers, my members, and my moderators. I appreciate y'all. And I love y'all. Excuse the noise in the background. I have the dryer going, washing clothes. Um, and I think one of my kids in their rooms kind of got the... They must have fell asleep with the TV up extremely loud. But um, just excuse the noise, y'all. Full house tonight, okay? Full house. Anyway, so this video is going to be about Jelani Day. Uh, I want to touch on two main things on this video because I have questions. Okay. Be looking forward to um, Daniel Robinson breakdown coming up. A Summer Wills videos, updates, breakdowns, and Daniel Robinson. More breakdowns. In his case. So we getting back to it, y'all. My voice is back. We back to it. So let's just get let's get ready. And it was a lot of information around Jelani Days. Um the people that are suspicious in this case, in Jelani Day's case. So I'm having to break a lot of it down. And I have a lot of stuff I have to read and go over in my free time. Okay. When I get a little spare time, I have to dissect and break things down. Okay. So, with Rodney Bolster, y'all know is Kara Bolster's husband. Okay. Um, These are his addresses that's linked to him. And... It actually makes me question some things. Rodney Bolster. I got questions for you. Now, I marked out the top of them because that is their current address. And I really don't, you know, believe in nobody stalking and, and, and all that in the third. So, I'm not putting out their current address. Okay? I'm not doing it. Um... But the reason why I'm showing these past addresses is to see where they've been. What areas do they know? Okay. So, if we look at LaSalle, Peru. LaSalle, Illinois. Peru, Illinois. LaSalle, Peru. It's very close to Bloomington, Illinois. So, is Champaign, Illinois. They lived in Champaign, Illinois. They've lived in Jacksonville, Illinois. See, in Illinois, these little towns, these little cities are nothing but like 45 minutes away, hour away, hour and a half away. And so I want y'all to look at the locale, okay, because I'm questioning you know, because they have had a lot of past addresses. I've never known a married couple that move a lot. So, I'm looking at that. Um, Especially when you're buy a house. When you're looking to settle down with your wife and you want to buy a home. You want that to be the home that y'all die in. You know. They do a lot of living in a home for a while. And they sell it. So, I'm looking at that, 
okay um this recent the address they're in now is the house that they've been in for a little while so let's see how long they stay in that one but these past addresses it's it's so close in different cities in illinois so rodney have you and Kara been through La Salle, Peru, Illinois? Champaign is very close. Jacksonville, all of these places are all close to Bloomington, Illinois. We know that's where you live right now. But looking at Jacksonville, Illinois, Champaign, Illinois, at some point, you and Carol have been through LaSalle, Peru, Illinois. For those who do not know, that's where Jelani Day's body was found. So my question to Rodney is, do you know LaSalle, Peru, Illinois? Do you know the area? Do you have friends? business partners, associates in LaSalle, Peru, Illinois. Do you know the area of LaSalle, Peru, Illinois? See, because y'all lived in cities all around Bloomington Normal. And you would have to drive through in LaSalle, Peru. It's just the exits from y'all addresses. So I'm wondering, do y'all know the area? Do you know some areas in Peru? And if you're smart, because let's put myself in the mind of a criminal. I'm going to know an area very well, but I'm going to put a person that I want to be found in the area that can't be linked back to me. That's going to be a place I know, but never had a residential address. Place where I know where there may be associates or business partners that I've visited, done business with. Places I may know, but you can't link it back to me. I hope y'all are get what I'm saying. If you put your mind and yourself into the mind of a criminal, a murderer, a killer, you're going to know an area, but you're going to make sure you put the person where they won't be found. And if they are found, they will be severely decomposed. Less evidence will be found. On top of that, less evidence, you can't trace that city to me because I've deliberately put that there, that person there, so you can't trace it to me. See, if I was, if they, if he, if he was found in Champaign, Illinois, it would trace back to Rodney and Carol. If he was found in Jacksonville, Illinois, that would be traced back to who? Carol Rodney. So if it's very hard for me to believe that Rodney and Kara has never been to Peru, has no idea where it's at. I have a hard time believing that. Being I'm looking at the places they've lived, they've been all through those cities in Illinois. And I'm ready, I'm willing to bet my life on it. They know people in LaSalle, Peru. And they have traveled through LaSalle, Peru. I'm willing to bet my life on it. And if I'm smart, I'm a Noah area because I've been there. But I never had an address there. So therefore, you can't trace it back to me. I want y'all to look at that. Um, another thing I want you guys to look at really quick is this. 
on Kara's background. Now, I want y'all to look at the physical therapist. We mentioned it a little bit earlier, but we really mainly spoke on more of her speech pathology degree and um, her work and how she wasn't, she had stopped working. It said that she wasn't working. So I was asking, how was she employed at the school if it's showing she has is not working at the school? Okay, so I am went back to look at something. Physical therapist. And her license is still active as a physical therapist. Kara, the wife of Rodney. Shout out to um, Penny. I meant to say that at the beginning. Shout out to you, hon. But, yeah. Physical therapist, she is still active. Now, in her background, it shows that, you know, she's not employed. And hasn't been for a while. So, I was trying to figure out well, how she was still working at the school. But she kept her physical therapist license active. As you can see. I have an address scratched out because, you know, we don't believe in doxing over here. And the number, the current number scratched, scratched out because we don't believe in doxing. Okay? We're just trying to get as much information, break things down, to find out what happened to Jelani Day. So we're not here to dox or get people stalked, stalked called, harassed. We're not here for that. So important things like that we're, we're not going to put out there. I scratched all that out. So... Let's get back to the physical therapist. I just find that interesting. Physical therapist. Physical therapist. So, Kara, did you at any point in time work? Your job function says you're an active physical therapist. You're active in the state of Illinois. So what work do you do in physical therapy? Have you practiced it? And when do you practice it? Are you practicing it at ISU? Or is that just a backup license? Because some people do take other trades and get licensed in other things as a backup. If something happens, they get ill or they get injured. They have a job they can fall back on. So is this a fallback job? Or are you actively working as a physical therapist as well as teaching at Illinois State University in speech pathology? Or is this a license that you had to have? And the people want to know... Since you are claiming that Jelani Day missed his patient that morning, that we all saw him there dressed up for the meeting, dressed up to see his client, but you saying he wasn't there, and we the people don't believe you because we saw him there, we don't know why he would miss it, and if he did, it had to be a very good reason something happened. But who saw the client, Carol? You never let the people know who saw the patient that Jelani did not see because he allegedly missed the patient. So who saw the patient? We have questions about that. Who saw the patient? Did you see the patient, Carol? And I'm hoping, once again, I'm going to reiterate your Texas. And your phone calls and your concerns of Jelani's whereabouts should be in his cellular device. Your concerns, your calls, and your worries should be in his cell device. So, there should be messages asking him, is everything okay? 
Your patient is here. Where are you, Jelani? Yeah, that should be all in his phone. So I'm hoping, Carol, that your statements and your innocence that you're claiming and no ties to this situation is true. And that phone, which I don't know why it's taking so long for them to give an update on the phone. I, I don't know what's taking so long. I had someone come in and say it was clear. There's no way it can be clear. There's a lot to go through. And you got to search each person that you communicated with and match their story. So it can, I don't see them not having any update regarding that phone. That phone is a very key piece to the investigation. More suspects than all can be revealed with that cellular device that Jelani had. That's very pertinent to this investigation. So, Kara, back to you. What work are you doing in physical therapy? And did you see Jelani Day's patient that he had, that he was went missing and didn't get a chance to see, even though he was around on that campus that day? Who saw the patient, Kara? We want to know who saw the patient's. Did you see the patients? Also, I got an email and someone said that some of Kara Boaster's Facebook friends are carriers with T-Mobile. And I guess they wanted me to know that because Jelani Day allegedly was a carrier of T-Mobile. Um, so I will look into that, hun. I got your email. I just wanted to let you know that you know who you are. I got your email. I read it right before I did this video, and I will look into that. Like I said, there's a lot of information with Jelani today. I'm still over-reviewing, looking at, looking at location. Like I said, these two, Kara and Rodney, they do, they did a lot of house hopping in different cities in Illinois. So that raises some red flags for me. That they know LaSalle, Peru. They have to know that area. They they have to know that area. But now we're just looking, you know, for connections and, and trying to piece these pieces together. Because at the end of the day, something tragic happened to Jelani Day. And he did not put himself there in LaSalle, Peru, where he has no connections. So we are looking for those connections. So these two house hop in different cities. And it's very interesting. And they're all around that area. So I have a hard time believing that they did not. Go, they don't know LaSalle, Peru. Karen, Rodney, do y'all have friends or associates, business partners, Rodney, in LaSalle, Peru? If so, we will find out. The people are looking into you. I'm just letting you know. They're looking. They're looking very hard. So if you do, we the people going to know. And we're going to put it out there. Somebody knows something. Somebody knows what happened to Jelani Day. He didn't just go missing. He wouldn't deliberately leave his patients and go throw all his items, deceased, commit suicide, and then spread all his items after he killed himself. We don't believe that. We're not falling for that and we are fighting for justice for Jelani Day. We are fighting to find out what happened to him and we're going over all the people involved all the people that found pieces of items suspiciously acted suspiciously we're going over everybody that is suspicious has any ties to Jelani Day. 
All right, this your girl, Queen Toss Crime. I'm out. Be expecting another video dropping tomorrow. Peace.